Okay. I'll call the meeting to order. And we have the agenda. The first item is 11 1. Is there any pecuniary interest conflicts? Councillor Simpson? I believe it's 12.3. I'll step away for that one. Okay, thank you. Anything else? That's only uh, interest indicated. That'll be indicated in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. We have the agenda. Any uh, additions to the agenda? Motion to accept the agenda as presented. Calls for a home. Any discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Okay, that's carried. Then we have uh, item 3.1, regular council meeting minutes of October 26, 2020. Any errors or omissions? I'd entertain him. Councillor Chapman uh, indicates that he will move uh, the minutes as presented. All in favor? And that's carried unanimously. And we have item 3.2, and Rana uh, has a couple of amendments that she noted here. One was that Kyle uh, Beauchamp was not present for the org meeting, and I believe she indicates that. There was a, a spelling error for Councillor Holmes' name on one section, section huh? yep. 7.6, I think. So those two changes are noted thus far. Are there any other errors or omissions, corrections? If, if there are none, I entertain a motion to adopt those minutes as amended. Councillor Lloyd moves. Any discussion? All the question, all in favor? And that's carried unanimously. And we have nothing else until we go to 7.1, proposed amendments to the council procedural bylaw. Lana. All right, thank you, Mayor. I'm speaking tonight on the Council Procedural Bylaw, um, bylaw number 775-GE03-20. It was most recently amended in March of 2020. Um, this past year there has been a few things that have come up over the year that um, now that we've um, completed the organizational meeting, it just seems like a good time to maybe go over and review some items that maybe Council wishes to amend at this time. These are just proposed um, amendments. Nothing is cast in stone. There can certainly be other amendments maybe that council does see fit. I did include a copy of the actual bylaw so that you can see and I presented a few items um, suggesting uh, or asking for clarification if uh, council would so wish to make any changes. Um, the first one, meeting times. We start our meeting times at five o'clock and per section 5.3, 4, 5 and 6, um, notes that if should the meeting continue past nine o'clock that we do require a um, bylaw by 830 and given that a lot of our meetings have been going a little bit later um, in the day that um, I'm suggesting maybe of changing that time to the resulting motion by 930 to conclude the meeting by 10. Uh, we would require a resolution to do that and again um, these are just proposals so should any um, amendments need to be done I could come back to the next meeting with a proposed bylaw, including all of those amendments for council's review, and then you can pass a resolution or make a decision at that time. Um, the other one was recording of the votes. Um, in the council procedural bylaw, minutes are currently recorded with the names of those opposed to a motion. And according to the MGA, this is only necessary if council um, requests that a vote be recorded. Um, so currently, right now, if there's any opposition, then it lists everyone for and everyone against. So if council 
So wishes, it, it could just say 5-2 carried, as opposed to unless a councillor specifically would ask that that be recorded to state the name. The recording of dialogue in the minutes, um, it was, we did a council best practices workshop in 2019 and it was noted that in the MGA, that it was um, in section 2081AI, the minutes are to be recorded without comment or note. And if you look back to our minutes during that time, they were quite extensive, sometimes eight, 10, 15 pages long, and included a lot of the dialogue. Um, in July of 2020, the MGA amended to remove the part section in the MGA to, s to remove without note or comment. So it's now left up to municipalities to decide whether or not you wish to have your minutes recorded in that way. In my research, I did consult with um, 16 various municipalities around the province, and I only found two others that actually record dialogue in the minutes. A lot of times the dialogue can be taken out of context, like by tone or in conversation. Um, the resulting resolution is recorded, and um, I did find that 14 of those municipalities do not record the dialogue. So should council wish to bring this back, um, we would require a resolution to do this. I would also like to note that we do live stream all of our meetings and we have um, implemented a policy in uh, March of 2019 to reflect that. And we do rec keep uh, retain our recordings for a period of four years. As from the last council meeting, there was some discussion about um, upgrading our live streaming equipment. And there are other municipalities that do have, um, they record in their live streaming and then they timestamp. So maybe as a way of um, compensating for including dialogue, we could include um, maybe some research into recording of the timestamp. Um, some other, like I said, m some other municipalities do that so that it, if it references a certain motion or a certain item, then it, it references right to the timestamp. So we do not currently have that capability. If that was something to be implemented at this moment, it would have to be like a manual um, figuring out of that. But there is some capability in our software programming to do that if that's council's wish to maybe explore that as an option. Uh, the la the Number four there, notice of motion. Um, per section 19.0 of the existing council procedural bylaw, like should a council member wish to have a matter added to the agenda, um, it's asked to produce the motion in writing and forward to the CAO with a request that it be discussed with the mayor who shall refer the notice of motion directly to the next regular council meeting. This process will allow administration to come prepared to the next meeting with a proper response and information pertaining to the topic and is especially helpful on topics that require in-depth research or consultation on the matter. There's no resolution required for this. It's already included in the bylaw. It was also noted on the agenda order that um, our current agenda starts with public hearing, and sometimes it kind of makes it confusing or it doesn't really go with the flow of the meeting to start in that way. It's obviously we have to open up the meeting, call the meeting to order, um, so I'm recommending that the agenda order to change the public hearing to go after um, the adoption of the minutes. So just to move it down three items. And a resolution would require to do that because it is listed specifically in our council procedural bylaw of the order of that. So those are just some of the suggestions that I'm making. If council had any other ones they wanted to bring forward, I'm certainly open to answer any questions or comments. Floor over to council. Does any members of council have any thoughts or questions? <coughs> Councilman Chapman. Thank you, Worship. Uh, thank you, Lana, for this, uh, for all your work on this particular item. Uh, section 27 uh, in that um, procedural bylaw still reflects the old I believe the old wording. Would that, uh, is that wording going to change then in terms of, I just don't have it right in front of me, but. Um. 
Councillor Chapman through to the chair. Section 27 refers to voting on motions. Is there something specific in there that you wanted? Uh, yes, that it would, it still reflects the old way. So what that means is that there's the recorded votes aren't necessary to anymore, so oh. but you still have it reflected in section 27. <coughs> there has not been any amendments made. That's okay. tonight I'm just suggesting if that is something of council's wish. So then the next meeting, then I would come back with a proposed um, bylaw to reflect that removal of that and that it would just be if council so wished by declaring okay. the recording of the votes. Mayor Simpson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I feel that um, with the motions, I still feel that the names uh, who were against the motion should still be recorded. Um, I do not feel that dialogue is needed, especially with our live streaming. Um, I really like the idea of the ta time stamps in for the live stream, but you know, I, I think we have to look at what the type of live streaming equipment we get, if it's capable of that. And what about adding uh, a consent agenda into the agenda? So instead of, we have a lot of it under our information items and correspondence, but just maybe having that part of a consent agenda, I think would be a benefit. I, I also agree that uh, I'd like to see the names continue to be put down as to who's for and against motions. As far as recording the dialogue in the minutes, <clears throat> I don't think that's necessary as long as those four years of archived videos are actually accessible on the town website. So they're archived so that I can go to them and pick off each one of them as I want. Because sorry about the interruption on Councillor Chapman there. I just went to the, see the website right now to see if there is actually a place where all of the videos are archived that I could pull up three meetings ago or something and I didn't really notice it very quickly. But so as long as they are accessible for us to go back four years, then I'm okay with Elta Dialogue. But if, if they aren't on our website where everybody can go back and pull those meetings up, then I would want to have the dialogue back on. the different proposals I have since well really only five because the one uh, notice of motion doesn't need anything it's already accommodated for so we don't have to really spend much time on that but so we have a total of five different uh, items that we were might consider so uh, so for meeting times uh, the change for uh, a vote to that that hour change that seems to be agreeable to everybody Anybody have any objection to that? So we'll bring back the bylaw with that reflected. And then uh, for the recording of the names, the recording of the vote, um, we, I think we have Councillor Simpson and Councillor Holm that have spoken to that. And. Uh, you know, the MGA does uh, allow for us to make a motion to uh, ask for a, a recorded vote if you don't want to do this on a regular basis and that. So I'm kind of, sometimes I'm on both sides of that because these can be used to kind of uh, weaponize the minutes a little bit sometimes when you're doing the for and against and it can go back in time and it's uh i i have made some motions on that you know i'm not afraid i'm not ashamed of anything i vote on but you know it, sometimes it can go back and, and uh, people that research the history of things uh, like you say uh, with the brevity of the minutes and that uh, sometimes there isn't really a recording of a counselor's maybe their uh, conditional disapproval of something or you know their 
they would kind of be okay with approving it, but they are kind of not, and they kind of say why, but it, and then they vote against it, and so it's, it can be used a little bit harshly in the annals of time sometimes. So I mean, I, I prefer to just uh, go and have a have a, where you uh, re ask for a recorded vote if you wanted to. But that's my opinion. But. Councillor Lloyd. Thank you, Worship. I would agree to leave the names on, but maybe for people that are opposing it, if they want to have a statement on there, that they could be allowed to have that recorded. If there's you know a particular reason why they're voting against it and they want that recorded, so I would be in favor of keeping the names on there. Okay. So uh, anybody want to speak to that? I think we have no real consensus on that one yet. Uh, Councilor Chairman. Your, your Worship, I, I, in, in your reference to the MGA, I tend to support that uh, philosophy more than anything. I, I think if there's a request to have recorded votes either way, it's uh, for the positive or for the negative, um, that would be up to the, the uh, presiding officer at the time of the council meeting. But um, um, as far as uh, needing to record only one side or the other, I think a motion is carried uh, or, or defeated. Um, and in some cases, it can be requested to have that motion recorded uh, or the vote for and against. Thank you. Okay, so, well, we can, you want to divide this down the road? Then I guess we can just vote it for and against. So I think we have consensus on number one and then the recorded names. The, do you want to make a motion to re remain with recorded names, Councillor Holm, then? Or what? I'd be tending oh. towards only because I think it's very divisive if we have to request a recorded vote. I think that is actually pointing a finger at somebody who maybe is voting for or against the motion. And so I'm totally against, uh, it's either got to be all one way or all the other way. And so I'm all in favor of recording the names on the vote so that it doesn't get to be a game. So just for a show of hands, all in favor of the re recorded names on the votes. Okay, so we have majority there. Okay, and in uh, recorded dialogue, I think we have, uh, cons do we have consensus on uh, keeping the minutes the way they are, provided we have a reliable live stream uh, archival minutes, and maybe direction to get the administration to research on the time stamping. I like that idea of being able to correlate those two things. CEO uh, Hastings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just for a quick example of Council would like to see how that actually works in practice. The City of Lethbridge embeds the video recording with their actual agenda items. I believe they use the same agenda software that we do. So all you have to do when you go on the City of Lethbridge website, click on the agenda item that interests you, and not only does the staff report, corresponding staff report pop up, but that portion of the live stream meeting starts airing. So it's quite slick. The two qualifiers, before you get too excited, we'll have to look at what's it cost. Um, and the logistics involved with making it happen. But in, in a perfect world, that is quite an efficient way to have um, the actual context to the resolution that appears in the minutes um, paired together. Okay. And then, so notice the motion that's already allowed. We don't really need to introduce anything like that. So then the agenda order, that seems reasonable, the sequence, the public, uh, hearings inside the ag amended, adopted agenda in my books. So anybody against that? None, I don't see any. So we will do that. And then uh, consent agenda. I think that's a good idea. Quite, <coughs> quite uh, within the best practices of governance anyway, so. Anybody against uh, the amendment to include a consent agenda? 
I see none. Mayor Johansson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a point of note, if the consent agenda, the exploration of that addition um, will also have implications on the agenda order. So we will factor that particular detail into the agenda order changes while we're at it. Yeah. All right, so then a motion to direct the administration to uh, proceed with uh, the amended bylaw as uh, indicated with number one, uh, the meeting times being changed as recommended, uh, leaving recorded votes the same, uh, leaving the dialogue the same as we, uh, we do now and uh, with the investigation on the uh, cost implications and the logistics of uh, in embedding the timestamp. Yep. Uh, number, then also the agenda order. So the agenda order to include the public uh, hearing within the open meeting and then also uh, number, the consent agenda inclusion and that is also understood to modify the sequencing of the agenda as well. So, Councilor Simpson moves that. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, I see none, all in, all in favor? That's carried unanimously, thank you. And then we have, Spencer Croyle here to introduce item 7-2, Accessibility Working Group. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening to you and Council. I'll keep my comments on this one brief as it's recently been brought forward to Council in late September. So after the September 28th meeting where Council gave staff the approval to reopen the call for nominations for the Accessibility Working Group, the call was, was reopened advertised a number of times on our social media platforms. Um, a member of the community had reached out and asked if they would be able to reshare that on a couple of the local uh, Facebook pages. They've done that and we've received three nominations. Those are included in the closed portion session of the meeting for council's consideration. But beyond that, uh, I'd like to bring forward the recommendation that the nomination process can remain open from this point forward, which is maybe a little bit atypical from other call from nomination processes. However, um, with the three individuals who have applied and the focus of this particular group, it would be, uh, in my mind, a reasonable step to take to just leave the call for nominations open and advertise for any new members of the community who may wish to sit on this group from time to time. However, I do think, uh, should council wish to approve the three individuals who have applied for the formation of the group, of their good work, and the focus of the group could start sooner than later. Councilor Holm. Can you remind me, how many nominations are we looking for? We have three now. What is the maximum number you want on this team? Certainly, through the chair to Councillor Holm, uh, excellent question. The, there really wasn't any um, maximum number or minimum number we were looking for. We were hoping for more than uh, the one who had applied in the past. But really, it can be a difficult thing garnering support for a working group, as, as I'm sure we're all aware. So uh, with the three applications that we have, that would be, in my mind, sufficient to start. And I don't believe that there will be a a huge onslaught of new applicants in the future. So if, if a couple of more would like to round out this team as it uh, is proposed to sit now, then that would be just fine from the staff perspective. Councillor Lloyd. Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> I think I'd like to see it open for a little while. Uh, just in case there's other people that didn't know about it that might want to. We can maybe ask other people as well if they want to be on the committee. It's a pretty important committee, I think. Mm -hmm. Hey, Councillor Chapman. Thank you, Worship. Uh, through to Spencer, uh, would you help me just refresh my mind as to 
uh, the appoint uh, the staff um, or administration appointments that you have to that committee? Uh, certainly through the chair to Councillor Chapman. Um, if you could just clarify a little more what you're referring to with the administrative appointments. Uh, so staff that would be sitting on as well? Certainly. So that would likely be myself, a uh, member of the infrastructure team and the operations team, just because this type of work and the goal with making our built environment and particularly the public realm more accessible spans a number of different types of service that are provided by the town. Um, things such as the discussions around snow clearing, um, new or enhanced access to park spaces downtown, um, and then of course longer term planning for how we figure out to how to embed uh, more guidance around future facilities and public spaces to be able to be as accessible as possible. So that's more where I would come in. Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Your Worship. So I'll make a motion to approve the formation of it and also keep the nomination process open. Okay, we have motion by Councillor Simpson to approve the formation of the working group and approve the nomination process to remain open indefinitely. Any discussion? All the question, all in favor? Very unanimously, thank you. Thank you. And we have eight one. Kyle. Hey, good after good evening, Mayor and Council. So tonight we have the financial update for the town's operations and capital projects. The period ended September 30th, 2020, um, essentially quarter three. The COVID-19 pandemic did have a large impact on the town of Coldale for 2020. Um, for this period ended, currently we're, we're projecting lost revenues and additional expenses of $480,000 that specifically relate to COVID-19. However, as part of this, uh, the federal and provincial government in their response the town did receive um, an 885 operating grant related to lost revenue additional expense expenses. This is the municipal operating support transfer referred to as the most grant. Or the 800, the 480,000 of this grant will be used to cover 2020 expenses and revenue shortfalls. Um, part of the balance will be used to cover projected lost revenue and expenses for 2021. It's important to note that that's only for revenue loss expenses up to March 31st of 2021, as the grant stipulates all funding must be spent by that date. Some of the areas of lost revenues include fine revenue, investment income, and other facility rentals. In combination with the most grant and receive and other cost efficiencies for 2020, the town of Coldale is projecting an overall surplus for 2020. However, until the year end is complete, it is too early to determine the exact amount. So we just scroll down a bit. Um, we do have the, the statement of operations here. Um, right there is good, Lana. So this is just a summary. The first page here is the town of Coldale's revenue. Um, numbers on the going left to right. So left is the actual figure as of September 30th. Uh, right there is the budget number for the year, following by the budget percentage remaining. Uh, so essentially here, with everything being on board, we're looking for about 25%. Is that would equate to essentially one quarter left? Uh, going through these, so property tax, once the supplementary tax notices are issued, we do expect a surplus between 30 and $50,000 for property tax. That is due to assessment figures being higher than previously projected. Uh, utilities and service, utility fees and services, we do, they are on budget with a potential for a small surplus there. Operating grants, $30,000 surplus expected from the MSI operating grant, as that was higher than we had predicted last year during budget. An additional $41,000 surplus from the recreation funding agreement. Land development lot sales currently um, are on, have essentially uh, met the budget nine months into the year. Franchise fees, we do expect a small surplus. User fees, sales, and other goods. Um, we do expect a deficit here of approximately of $125,000. Uh, 
in lower user fee revenue and uh, rentals. Um, the pool alone this year had a $55,000 revenue drop compared to what we normally see. Uh, in 2020, we only had $10,000 of revenue when in a normal year, that's closer to 65,000. Investment income, we do expect a deficit of a $125,000 of interest income. That's due to low, lower rates. Um, just of note, in March, kind of before the pandemic was locking up, Town of Khalil was able to lock in approximately $17 million of our investments at a rate of 2.5%. Um, currently, the rates on the market we can get now are less than 1%, so we, we did kind of hit lucky there with a good offer, and we jumped on that, so that should uh, result in some uh, lower-than-expected losses there. Fines and penalties, $150,000 deficit is expected from that due to lower activity due to um, COVID-19 and, and further radar and traffic activity. Fines and penalties, so in referring to the property tax deferral, uh, approximately $40,000 cost from that program. Now, if we just kind of go to the final page there, we have the expenses by object. If you keep going, Lana, right there is good. Uh, so again, we have the expenses by object. So on the left is the category of the expenses, salary and wages, contracted services, and et cetera, followed by the actual balance of sep September 30th, the budget for the year, and the percentage remaining. So again, in that percentage remaining, 25% uh, is essentially on track for budget there. You see salaries and wages are currently at 29%, so there is a surplus expected there. Contract and general services, um, while this one is at 38%, I would say go look at note number one there because there are some large programs. Um, you know, if you look at the street light program that had a budget of 298000 uh, but only phase one is included in this. It's the expectation that phase two and phase three will eat up a good chunk of this for the remainder of the year. Snow removal program, we do expect that to obviously jump from $10,000 as of September 30th. The overall budget for that is 100,000. Sewer lining program has zero expenses so far, um, but to my knowledge, the operations department is working on getting the uh, tender or request for proposal out for that program. Solid waste program, Slightly higher expenses, uh, largely due to the compost drop off site at the arena. And then the RC and policing your show is kind of right on track there for budget. Uh, property tax requisitions, nothing out of the ordinary there. Uh, materials, goods, and supplies. This one does have a little bit of a higher surplus. However, it does make up more of the individual smaller amounts of among the departments. So the biggest item of note here that we kind of highlighted was the uh, water supply for our utilities. It's not unusual to see only a less than 25% budget remaining for that as we do have higher usage in the summer months compared to the fall months. Um, moving down one last page here, we have the capital budget. So the various capital projects followed by the cars broken up by year and their remaining budget effect. I'll just speak to a couple of these here. So we do have the uh, pool repairs. Uh, it should be note that the, the budget there was just for the cost of construction. Um, it was an oversight on my part that the engineering fees and other fees were excluded. Um, so even though there is showing in an um, overage on the budget, um, the true cost of the project was always essentially more towards that 240, 250 range. There are the available funds in the pool reserve to cover that off, though. The Main Street project with a budget of $4.7 million is expected to end at approximately $3.5 million. The wastewater lift station uh, is expected to be completed at the beginning of 2021 here. Uh, 8th Street South, another project. Um, that was under budget, total budget of cost of 356000 Project came in at approximately $120,000, so essentially a third of the budget there to complete the 8th Street South project. 
Uh, finally, we have a few pieces of equipment and machinery, uh, which we do anticipate to be completed towards the end of the year here. With that being said, I will uh, turn it back to council for any questions they have on this. Thank you, Kyle. Are there any questions through the council? Just give council a minute. You've given us uh, quite a comprehensive package, so a lot of detailed explanation as you went through. So, Dean O'Hasen. On the, the pool budget, I'd like to also point out that the original budget that was established for that project was close to 300000 and because we received such a good tender price, the actual budget was reduced down to 175. So it was costed properly to begin with. The adjustment just happened to be a bit bigger because it didn't include the consulting fees um, with regard to project management and design. So big picture from the original piece of information that was approved at uh, the 300 range, it came in sig significantly under budget. So that just wanted to add round out that uh, story in terms of the history of pool cost. Okay, and this is on the heels of our meeting not too many days ago, so we're quite, quite familiar with the topic anyway. Councillor Simpson? Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, we are very familiar. Uh, uh, just uh, can you refresh my memory for phase two and three of the streetlight program? Is that, when is that expected to be done? Um, from my expectations um, in talking to our operations, phase two is expected to be completed by the end of the year here. Phase three, I believe they're in the design process and they expect that to be completed um, at the beginning of 2021 within the first month or two. Uh, for the engineering structures here, we have Malloy Drain phase 2b we have it down there 3.1 million dollars is that not just what was presented to us from the government and do we not have to come up with trying to help help me here 300 350 thousand ourselves 280 280 thousand ourselves and i don't see that reflected in those numbers there is it so the, the 3.1 million is the total expected cost for the project. Um, since we haven't incurred any expenses yet, um, there's nothing to show. So the 3.1 shows uh, basically everything, not just our 280, but essentially what we would have for the grant funding as well, if that answers your question. without belaboring things if there's no we don't have to make this painful so if everybody's satisfied we could also entertain a motion to receive this very comprehensive report for information and thank uh, our c corporate services department for a great job councillor Avery well, thank you so just a couple questions um, so the, I see a lot of stuff is scheduled to be completed in 2020 um, I guess more of a, a statement than a question. If it was something that we needed for 2020, why are we in the 11th month of 2020 saying it's gonna be scheduled to be completed in 2020? If this is supposed to be a preventive maintenance budget item, why isn't it not looking at being replaced, replaced earlier in the year rather than later in the year? And then if this is a budget capital wise that we're working on, um, we did mention in one of our previous meetings about a roundabout at the corner by McDonald's, Tim Hortons. And I don't see that anywhere and I didn't see it in our budget meeting on Thursday for us to contemplate the cost on that roundabout. So in talking about the, the first question, uh, so the schedule that's where it says scheduled to be completed, that's the kind of the expectation, but 
at the end of the year will be completed. Um, I would say as to why they're not completed earlier than the, in the year, um, this is a quite comprehensive budget and um, it may just be, uh, there's only so much available staff time to get some of these projects done. So they just, it's, you can't get them all done um, at the beginning, but kind of as they proceed throughout the year. Um, in regards to the, the roundabout you discussed, um, that's not on here um, as it wasn't a previously approved capital project in the 2019-2024 budget discussion. Um, if that's something council would like to see, it would could bring that to the next scheduled budget discussion on November 23rd for council uh, consideration discussion. Hey, uh, hey, oh, hey, scenes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, through to Councillor Avery. Um, and Spencer can jump in as well. On the council meeting of November 23rd, we'll have to actually have a presentation from the Transportation Master Plan consultants um, as an update to council on the um, final draft document. And we're also going to have the consultant who has performed the design of that circle present as well to explain to council the analysis of the intersection as well as the estimated cost and rationale for why they are recommending one design methodology over another. So that'll be not at this, um, two weeks from now. And then I know um, Spencer has been working to coordinate their delegation to council on the matter. So if Spencer has anything to add to that, I'll pass that on to, to him. Okay, thank you, uh, Dalen. Through the chair, I don't have uh, any other additional detail to add. Um, at this time, but we, uh, as already mentioned, we'll have the consultant, the design consultants here to discuss costs and designs with directly on the 23rd. Councilman Chapman. Yeah, thank you, uh, Your Worship, and through to Kaylin or and Spencer. I think the transportation master plan was certainly the document we'd all been li looking forward to. Uh, with that, I would just simply ask that the uh, roundabout or traffic circle concept to be moved up on the priority list if there is going to be one. I'm sure we'll wait for that presentation to unfold, but I'd certainly like to see it somewhere n at near the top of the priority list for, for transportation matters. Councillor Chapman. Thank you. Like the intent is to have the consultants come in and speak to council direct um, globally on the master plan itself, but also on a few different particular capital items, um, including the intersection of 21st Avenue and Lando Lakes Drive, where the you know, Tim Hortons and McDonald's are located. Following that discussion, some direction will be requested from council on what information council would like administration to bring, bring back in return, including. Um, whether it gets um, explored or added to the capital budget, and if so, which year, because that is a, a service level priority question for council, but we wanted council to hear the information first, the logistics on the consultant's perspective on urgency, and then from there, council gets the final say because they control the purse on which priorities get funded and which ones don't. So that was the, the purpose behind the, the order. We didn't, in the absence of that as staff, want to throw it on to the capital plan and then get council to deliberate on something without having that broader information and study before them. So that's why it wasn't in the last budget meeting, but it can certainly be added to a future budget meeting before the budget's approved, if that follows. Councilor Gentleman. Motion to... Uh, um, accept the, the report as presented. Any questions? Call the question, all in favor? That, that's a, all, you were in favor, Councillor? Okay. So it was unanimous then, thank you. Okay. Then we have information item, and on uh, information item 11.2, uh, the same, uh, subsequent error in the, that where Councillor Holmes name needs to be amended. So uh, unless uh, council has any other action arising all the information items, we could uh, receive those uh, and with the amendment to 11.2 uh, as discussed. 
the property selling accounts are home. Councilor Simpson moves uh, the information items 11, 1, 2, 3, and 4 with the noted amendment in 11, 2 for the Brett Stellings. Any discussion? All questions, all in favor? Okay, that's carried. Okay, and we're done the open session of the meeting. I'd entertain a motion to go into the closed session. Councilor Lloyd moves. All in favor? That's carried unanimously.